What's going on? Hang on, this looks a bit... It's probably a little bit windy as well, I can feel it on my neck. Some stuff has happened over the last few months. Our friend Shane came down with his red Levin. This car was sitting out in their back garden. It is an Accord Type R and he asked me if I wanted it because they were using it as a track car and then they just don't have the motivation or the space or the time at the moment because he's building a Track 86. So he offered this to me for an insanely cheap price. It's probably the cheapest Type R in Europe. That's what we'll have to clickbait this video with. Cheapest Type R in Europe? We got this car for 600 euros. Oh my God, you told them. Dude. The Accord Type R was a European only model. So this CH1, so this shape was only sold in Europe, which is kind of mad. So Japan got the CL1, which is the Euro R, and they call that the Euro R, but then they designed this in Europe and call this one the Type R, so it's really confusing. It's a really nice looking car. It's kind of got the american -y style Accord front, but then it's like a four-door. It's like they almost did a homologation-ish kind of thing for like the touring cars here. I don't know why Honda built this, but the it's money- really strange. And like the fact there's only less than 2,000 of them ever yeah, made. Yeah, ever made. Why does it definitely cost way too much money to make like less than 2,000 yeah. of these? The reason why these cars aren't really that popular is because it's not a JDM car. They were built in the Swindon factory in the UK and it's a British car, but it has a Japanese heart. So it has a H22 A7, which is the same engine that came in the Euro R. Less horsepower, less... 212 horsepower, yeah. Versus 220 yeah. in that Skoda. But it's a cool looking chassis, like it's a, it's a nice looking car. It is, it's still, it's still fresh like, yeah. I think it is anyway. Like I never had much of an opinion on these cars, I always thought they were just interesting that yeah. that the UK got its own Type R before they built the EP3 and stuff like that, but this was just designed for the European market, more so the British market. They got the nickname the, the Rover Type R. The Rover Type R. Yeah, yeah just because it kind of resembled that Rover. Yeah, because like Honda and Rover were sharing stuff at the time. Exactly. And before they brought out the newer versions of the Type R's, this was the second most powerful Type R after the NSX because it's 2.2 Type R. We've said Type R a lot here. But it is nuts, like this is a Honda Type R. And you know, a bunch of people have done videos on these on YouTube and uh, a lot of people have said that they're heavily underrated. They're heavy car. 1400 kilos. 1400 kilos. The story behind this car. So it is Irish road registered, but it actually is originally a UK import. The car is off the road because it failed Irish inspection because these cars are notorious for rust. So they rust really bad. I think it's at the bulkhead and it can't be repaired or it's too expensive to repair. Yeah, this door handle is broke. So the reason why we got it for so cheap is because it's completely gutted and its intention was to be used as a track car. We got it with no interior. These come with a really, really nice uh, standard um, Recaro. I'm not sure what the, the name is. I'd have to look, but it's the same seat that comes in the Evo 5, I think. Yeah, you can see on the door card, that's the color scheme. See if yeah. you open the door the, on the trim. Oh yeah. Because that seat's over like an EP2 or yeah, something. Yeah, so it had a full matching uh, Recaro interior, but uh, we were told that the owner took it out and burnt it. What's mad is they come with an EK9 steering wheel from factory, which is a nice little random touch. Everything's on display. You can see rust creeping up in areas. So, Sunderland. Here's yeah. what's really, really funny, right? That's where it was bought from. Yeah, that's where it originated from, Westington Way, Sunderland. But then it actually went up to Lisburn. Oh, here's all the British tax books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is great, right? So the guy that stripped it, if you watch this, I'm sorry, I just think it's kind of funny. He took out everything, including the glove box stuff, but he left all the stuff that was in the glove box just on the ground so you can still have the full service history, but the interior, including even the door rubbers, have been burnt. So how long is it in the country? So what, Shit, so, that's, so it's probably... So it's up to north on another ridge. Yeah. That ridge there. But it was up there for a good while then, so it's not yeah, down it here too long. 2014 it was brought to Ireland. Yeah. What's, what I think happened is it came here and then it got too rusty and then this is what happened to it. They bought... Type R floor carpets. Well there's definitely no Type They're R floor gone. carpets in it now. <laughs> Someone cared about this because they brought it to like all the original yeah, look. Hondas. Uh, Wire, dealers throttle, oil filter and kept the full service history in a really nice folder. Yeah, the man the transmission fluid was done. It's full of spiders and cobwebs absolutely everywhere. This has been sitting up in the lads' back garden for about two years and they were happy to just get rid of it. Uh, yeah, I love that so much. I love that the glove box has been removed. 
But see, the thing about British Hondas is they are notorious for rust. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, that's interesting. This is like the history you'd want on a Jap car. Yeah, but what's sad is that's the history. Like, this car was loved up until about, what, like 2014 or 15? Yeah. And in fairness, okay, in fairness, it's still actually in really decent condition. Like, it hasn't been... Aside from having absolutely no interior, it's mechanically it's, awesome. mechanically it's great. We do have the logbook and it's still Irish registered. And um, but our plan for this car is to use it as a track car. We uh, miss the EK because it's gone, and myself and Flip don't really have something to bring to the track and just like abuse and have a bit of fun in. So we bought this car off the guys. Like I said, they sold it to us for like really really cheap, and we couldn't say no. So we decided to go halves on it, and we're going to just enjoy it. I think the plan is to, yeah, just just drive the shit out of it and have fun. Yeah, well, I've like childhood friends in Lambeg and Antrim, and this was and his this car is in his name. That's kind of creepy. That's fucking really creepy, man. Why I, don't you message him? See if he has I any pictures. Yeah. What the fuck? When was that? Isn't that funny? We oh just caught God, that live on camera. Like... Flip's having a meltdown. I am. That's that's fucking. It's a nice shift knob. Yeah, that's weird. That's so like... it's so cool. Thank you to the guy that stripped it, but decided to leave the, the service history with, with it. The lads were going to break the car, they were going to sell the engine, because the engine and box, it's, these come with an LSD box from factory, same as in the Euro R. Uh, but uh, instead of stripping the car, they just said they'd sell it to us complete so we could have a bit of fun with it. It's a Honda Type R, like, it is the cheapest Type R. It's a VRT, 800 euro. The, the VRT was 819 euro. So the VRT is the vehicle registration tax to register a car in Ireland and sometimes it can be all sorts of prices. But the thing about these cars is they're not actually really worth anything for some reason, so they're not, because they're not a JDM car, they're kind of the unloved Type R. Like, I think these are the most underrated Type R out of all of them. Yeah, definitely. Completely slept on because they don't have a B series, they have a H series. But, uh, there's a spider on me. Yeah, this car is crawling with cobwebs. Look at the size of the brakes. Like proper big four pop beauties. They know what it's worth, but they were just happy to give it to us. But uh, for 600 euros, we got four pop brakes, LSD box, 212 or 15 horsepower. It's a Type R. It comes with a pro like a decent manifold from factory. Pop. Now, and the first time I ever met Flip, he was wearing this fucking Type R jacket. But this Type R jacket looks like it should have been for this car. Oh, where's the key? Type R technician can. Uh, Look at that, like. As the years go on, and maybe someone will watch this video in years to come, like, it's... Oh, there's way too many Type Rs. i get the book as well. It's one more. Uh, First time I ever met you. 40 years. And you're wearing it in your Type R. <laughs> Fucking so many Type Rs! <laughs> yeah, I bought this off Tuna Factory for 120 euro. Man, that's a heavy bonnet. Nice, proper... Tubular dude yeah, it's, manifold. It's girty now. It's girty, it? and there it is. The so only uh, things now. So yeah, someone did this. Yes. We'll have to tidy up this. It has a K and N. Actually has one. Yeah. Uh, That's kind of it, really. Yeah, it's cool. Like it's got an LSD box, which is exactly what you would like for track days, because we only had a one wheel peeler in the EK4. Yeah. And for people that are like probably like, oh no, not another Honda. Like Hondas are fucking awesome. And if you've watched our Japan series, like they take so much abuse. Like we've converted Ruben, who is really like the most anti-Honda anti guy ever. Guy. And any of our friends, like you got to drive one to experience. Like they're actually an you'll over end up buying a jacket. You'll end up like Flib. Yeah. Over-engineered cars from back in the day that will never be repeated ever again and to get a like four door saloon with like a big ignorant engine it's like a hot rod from factory like it's it's amazing with an LSD box and a family saloon yeah it was just like a, a family race car basically nice old wing on the back that's the only thing that helps it stand out from like a normal Accord from that era that and the red badges yeah, and the moldings are gone yeah but there's so many hints of like the EK in it and stuff yeah like, you know? I think they're the same as the EK uh, what's called this part EK of it EK9 mirrors. So for the Americans and stuff and people that probably didn't know like you never got this car so it is a mad looking machine and it came with these wheels from factory and they kind of have a hideous enough center cap. But they're speed lines. But they're actually speed lines. 17 by 7. Yeah. A cool car man. 
Yeah, it's definitely. That's like recession kind of value prices that we that's got. Ten years ago. Ten years ago prices, like because it's COVID and everything has gone out of control. The fact the lads offered this to us for cheap and to enjoy and shit, like they knew we were go it's going to a, a place where it'll actually be used and we'll have a bit of crack. So, yeah. I'm buzzing. They'll never have that pedigree because they're not a Jap car because yeah. they're a British. Honda, it won't have that coolness. But the engines are Jap, and it is designed by a Japanese company, so. Yeah, it's, it's there, the pedigree is there. Yeah, it's a mad machine. Never sold anywhere else. Even the Japanese don't have them. I went looking to see if there's any in Japan, and there's, they're just non-existent. They're white though, as well. I, yeah. I, thought they, I thought they didn't. Show the inside. That's a funny mic. Yeah. What's the story behind the jacket? You've probably said it a million times. It is real deal. Oh man, it's got the Honda stuff on, so it isn't like a dodgy no. Marks model no, no, special of no. Mondello. It's not like fucking Pink Cam Lab. Yeah. I remember going to Mondello. And Did you buy it from a Honda dealer? I bought it from the Tuna factory back in the day. I went up and bought a Decat and this jacket. This was 120 euro back in. And the Decat was 104. Decat was actually <laughs> 120 euro. What yeah. you get, Brian? Got a wee burger. A mighty Mac. So Super Max is our version of McDonald's. And yeah. hey, they won a lawsuit against him. What was it? I know what to say. You've heard of Mad Max. Indeed, you've heard of other Macs from hither and yon. But the truth of the matter is, Mighty Mac is the ruler of them all. Now. What? So uh, McDonald's, <laughs> McDonald's tried to sue uh, Super Max over the Mac thing. And Super Max won. <laughs> Two seconds ago, we were talking about how mint it is, and now we're trying to get you to do an yeah, R. Close the door. I can't do an R properly because I can't stand. You'll have to do a quick balancing act. Disgusting. You're trying to make an R now with your body. Having a wee, Ralph? Go on, Ralph, have a wee. No, don't do it, Ralph. Just brush off it instead. Max Power Babe pose from 2003. <laughs> Touch a nipple. <laughs> Becky, or was it Jackie Dex or what Jackie was it? Deg. Deg. Jackie Deg. How yeah. would you not know it, Neil? Because I was 12. <laughs> Woo! It's Seven's Day, boy. You're probably not going to see this for about a year, so. Yeah. Makes no difference. Wish. I hear a bit of crunch. Right, the big test. But we're not like 10 grand into this, so it's not as anxious. He's the good oh man. my god. I see what you mean. Wait. Actually, not terrible. <laughs> Layers of crust. Holy fuck. Is it great? This is why we got this for 600 euro. Oh, that's only the wishbone mounting. Our oh, subframe mounting's okay. Ah, no, it's mounted here as well, it's fine. Fuck! Look at that, and it's been a under seal, so it's the under seal is holding in can the I, rust. Can I do it? Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh. 
So this is what this the, is what you get for 600 this is quid. What the UK does to cars. Oh, that is. That's light there, boys. That's we, look. He, hey, man, we'll be shedding weight in no time. All we got to oh. do is just. Oh man, or Read something. Well. Look or at maybe that. it's just drips of drips of. I think it's just been layered in layers and layers of That's great. Schultz. I love how the, um, the pipe here is nice and soft. That looks aftermarket. Doesn't it? Yeah, but it isn't. Look at those welds, man. Honda. Yeah, it's mental, isn't it? Dougie. You know what's great is like. Shouldn't be under here, Dougie. My 86 was in better condition than this underneath. Fire. And that yeah. makes me happy. Yeah, this was in the sea, I'd say. Like, was it? Back into the sea. Yeah. And you know what? Toyotas, especially 86, used to get some shit for the, for the rot. What's the head, headlight adjuster? Yeah, Why is that headlight? It's a bad angle, is that? It's adjusting it, sir. Yeah, sir. Sure. <laughs> But yeah, the Toyotas used to get the shtick, but the Hondas are fucking yeah, like that's that's mega scald. That's why that dropped. Because that's after crunching in. Crunching. I heard yes. it crunch. I'm going to do this. There's so much wax oil under this car. That's Actually, less steel than wax oil. Is it? All that light's doing is blinding me. Sorry. <laughs> that's all it's doing. It's very. It's very lighty. And it's no. been. And we're not blasting this one. Painted over. Yeah, we're not, because there'd be nothing left of this car if we blasted. Yeah, probably would. Do you feel better now that the car is shitty on the bottom? So now we I can do, actually yeah, start. Feel, feel we are so bigging good. it up. Now we can actually start hacking it up because yeah, it's. No, it's fine. Yeah, look at this. And the viewers can know as well that it's uh, on for dear life. like the car is rotten from the ups, the underside up. It's trying to wind it's trying to, it's he's trying to wind The spring up. is trying to come off here. You can see it. Lovely. Yeah, there's a bit of an oily here somewhere, is there? Yeah, it's a, that's just the original. There's a lot of bad structural scutter that is not worth saving. There's a lot of stuff here that Mondello is going to love. The drippiness? No, that's the crust. Every corner, every time you hit curbs. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the car. Lighter, lighter. lighter. Car be webbo. Yeah, I don't want to find him. Well, you get what you well, pay for. Yes. So as we said earlier, the reason why most of these don't exist anymore, there's probably not that many of them still around, is because they're notorious for rust and they just get squished because people don't bother saving them. There is a spider living in the wheel. Look at that, he's actually in the fucking spoke probe. Lad, she's gone. Is it? Yeah. Whoa, whoop, whoop. Cool. Where, this where? was before they were worth 7,000 euro. Yeah, it's a lad just, I say lad go to that now onto the floor and put it into the bin. Yeah. yeah. Give it the wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> oh, don't don't wiggle stop moving, baby. Don't wiggle too much. Don't wiggle, too much. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. wiggle. Because how far the, tor the torch is this big. Weird. Oh, there's normal metal up there somewhere. Oh, you're actually lighting up the, um, the, the reversing mirror there. <laughs> yeah, the reversing mirror. <laughs> Where's your torch? Ah, it's in the car. It's scalding enough, Rob, isn't it? Yeah, it's mean. Well, at least we know what. What we're in for now. I'll just give the other wheels out. Yeah, that's what I'm Yeah. Oh, man, look at the chassis leg. Look at that. Yes, boy. Oh, my God. That is mental. Here as well, huh? Fuck. Yeah, she's nasty, man. Look at that. Yeah, time to get Barry down. We saw a lot of plates from underneath. Yeah, it's all this side. Yeah, it's all welded. Just kind of cut and shut job. Lovely. So you could do the same on the other side if you wanted. Yeah. Just put a big fucking plate yeah, there. Yeah, we probably should like. There's a little bit of play on that tire on end. The tiniest little bit of play. I love you're checking it all in the Honda jacket. It's yeah, like of course. Type R man checks what it all in the Type R. What other jacket would I wear for this? Like Ten minutes ago we were starting to fall for it out there again in the sun because from the outside it's lovely and it was like, oh, this thing's very straight and stuff. But then once we put it up we realised, well, we got it for 600 euro. I feel fucking great. Now I feel, <laughs> now I feel how I did when we first got it, going like, yes, let's actually drive the fucking piss out of this thing. And we should probably now put a livery on it again and wreck it and do what we want to do to it. Still looks too good. So yeah, because like I said, I haven't been around in a while. New stuff has appeared. Like Rob brought this in. When did you bring this in? Before Christmas? Uh, after, I think. After Christmas. Another Colt Rally Art. Virgin R? Yeah. Back this is the one you're keeping? Wait, Type R? No, so, how many of these have you brought in since we made the video of the red one at the time? Probably like 10 of them? 
14 of them. Uh, so you're painting the wheels white soon. Yeah. And bonnet is full blast. That's got a cage. It's fucking amazing. Going up the side of a mountain, top speed in one of these things made me fall in love with them. And actually just driving them when you had them. Like it's sad, but in Ireland, like the younger generation are more into like agricultural stuff, like diesel, agri, weird, TDI shit. And I guess that's just a different generation. I'm starting to feel like a bit of a, a dinosaur now, but when we were younger, it was like glanzes and starlets and stuff. But these colts are basically like the new version of that. And for a young person, you could actually get insured on one of these. If you like Japanese cars and you want something new that's up in the years that you can get insured on, like things like this, Coles would be a really good choice. But uh, yeah, it's weird. It's a shame that uh, it hasn't really happened. thought these would have caught on with the younger generation, but they want the boo. Lad. We're not about the boo around here. We're about the... Uh, Shitty rusty Hondas. Board specification. It says that you treat all your customers. Yeah, so let's see what we got. <clears throat> so you just came up with a nickname there while you were having a piss. We're mm. going to call it the Accord type Rust. First thing on the list? Rust. Rust. <laughs> hey, we love Rust, it seems, don't we? <laughs> yeah, so now its nickname is the Accord type Rust after what we've just seen on the lift. Yeah, it's, it's lightweight. Um, the only thing that doesn't rust is the jacket. Thank fucking God. How many years? 2008. Is it 2008 you've had the jacket? Is that oh, I'll have to look back. Um, what else? Oh, CV boot. Full stitch weld. Welding cage. CV boot. Um, that was it? Yeah, exhaust, decatted. Yeah. Power steering leak, oil leak, weld exhaust, CV boot. Clutch. Battery's now fine, which is great. Yeah. Oh, it needs a new belt, I think. You can hear him squeaking like fuck. One thing we've noticed is uh, you don't see many of these done well. There's not that many of them around at all. So, uh, geez, they are big. So we're going to just get, have a quick look at the potential of the car. This is our friend Johnny's. Yeah, we're going to try them on. Hey, Johnny. GTA. Hey, that's cooler already. Nice. Instantly. We're very excited by this. Oh man. And it looks Japanese now, like it looks, really Japanese. like the old standard wheels are a bit scabby in my opinion. Yeah, the added haze on the headlights. Yeah. It's very Japanese. No, that looks great. I'm buzzing off that. Oh fuck. We need something along the lines of this. The plan with this is to show people that you can still make something for cheap. Like there's cars obviously still out there, there's bargains to be had like. We got this for 600 euro. And we kind of want to make it like a decent enough track car that we can have a bit of fun in for like reasonable money. Like the whole purpose of this is because we're spending money on other projects. Yeah. So cheap fun. They're a nice wheel on an Accord. I want to see it fucking load or really Yeah, I know. See it load. So we're going to try to figure out suspension, see if stuff fits from a C CL1. I'm not sure. I don't think so. so. A lot of people are building mental shit and they're case swapping this and they're building like fucking 200 grand cars and all this kind of shit. Yeah. And we don't really have any of that kind of money. Like we're yeah. just average fucking idiots. And I guess a lot of you watching this as well. Yeah. You can't relate to Ferraris, Porsches, whatever. Yeah, and all that crazy shit. You can like, relate to this stuff. So it may not get the most views or whatever because people just for some reason love watching people with loads of money yeah. doing loads of things. But we're kind of just average people that don't have anything of that caliber. So we get excited about average working class machines. And to me, this is above average too. Yeah, yeah, of course. It gets more excited about seeing this outside an abracababra yeah, than a, a Porsche, Ferrari or, yeah. or an Enzo or something. We're screwed like, like as a lot of our friends get older and mature and they want like all this different kind of Beamers and Porsches and all this sort of shit. We're still just stuck in rusty Toyotas and Hondas and Nissans and Mazdas yeah. from the 90s and the 80s. Yeah, early 90s yeah. That's our buzz. That's our world, sadly. Yeah, we're and we're going to sink on that ship as it gets more expensive and yeah. that's our ship to sink on. So, Sorry for getting philosophical, but uh, come down the rabbit hole with us with the Accord yeah. and uh, we'll have a bit of fun. Along with all the other bullshit that's happening, so yeah.
There's loads more coming, and because I'm around more now, because we've finished the Japan stuff, we have loads of things to talk about, so. Wait. Look, weight reduction already. <laughs> Johnny the spoiler. Johnny. <laughs> what? Oh, he's a friend, he's a guy. He's all right. Cool.